but why not get another job? I mean, being in software sales, I mean, that's not necessarily a poor industry. People do very well in software. So why not get another job? Why why become a, a, an entrepreneur and a, and a franchisee? It's a great question. Well, I'll tell you that being in sales is great preparation for being an entrepreneur because most salespeople, you know, their, their, their plan, their total targeted earnings are based on some formula of base plus commission, which means you have some good years and you, you have some not good years, which is exactly what life is like as an entrepreneur times a thousand. So that was, you know, good preparation for me. But um, I just, uh, you know, as my confidence grew, I felt, hey, you know, I can do something. I have some good ideas. I'm not afraid to try. And um, I just wanted a taste of sort of uh, doing my own thing and, and trying to create something of value. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I was lucky enough to do that. And, and once you have a taste of that, I think it's hard to sort of go back, you know, to working for a company. And um, as an entrepreneur, you, you, you fail more often than you succeed. And, um, but each time you sort of bounce back and, and get to the next day, your ability to handle risk uh, and your tolerance for risk increases. And so, you know, at the end of, of my franchising experience, I was comfortable enough to try something new and not worry so much about failure or, you know, uh, or about not doing well right away. And so, um, my, you know, my confidence grew over that period and I just wanted to keep on, on being entrepreneurial. So, so I, have a, I have a deep question for you. Your time that you spent in software sales, did it uncover your entrepreneurial tendencies and build your confidence? Or did it teach you to be an entrepreneur? Uh, that's a good question. I don't think it, well, I learned some lessons. I wouldn't say it built my confidence. I mean, I learned some lessons. Being a salesperson, especially in enterprise sales, you know, you're walking into multi-billion dollar companies, trying to sell them the, the, the thing in your suitcase, quote unquote. And, uh, it's humbling, you know, so I was very humbled in that role. I would go into rooms and be a very small fish in a room with, with very big fish and, you know, it wasn't always a good feeling. And so that taught me a few lessons, you know, about people and about how to create sort of winning environments for everybody. And, um, you know, I learned a lot and the confidence really only arose once I became an entrepreneur because it was, it was scary. And, you know, I wasn't 20 years old where, where I could go home and eat craft dinner every night, you know, I had expenses and, and a lifestyle and, and things. And so it was a real risk for me trying it so late. Um, but I would say that more of my confidence came from actually doing it. Um, and, uh, you know, when I look back, obviously I saw people who, who had done it as well and I learned a little from them, but there's no substitute for actually trying something. And, um, you know, almost yeah. all the growth came after I tried. So what I'm hearing was this was already you, you you were not discovering something new as you were doing handling sales. This is something that was natural to you. Just it taught you some lessons about how to basically have a thicker skin in certain well, that's situations. It. That's it. I, you know, I, I always say like change is hard um, until not changing is harder. And working in enterprise sales was good for a long time, but at some point it became hard. Not hard enough to leave, but hard. But then one day, not leaving became harder than leaving. And so I left and, you know, embarked on, on a new career. And, um, yeah. and uh, you know, I had, So then I ask you, then why did you go, if this was already in you, why did you go into working for another company? Why not? start right from the get-go yeah i mean i i was i think at that point it was in me but it wasn't strong enough and i lacked confidence and and self-belief you know that i could succeed uh, you know and be sort of uh be an entrepreneur like other people i looked at who you know from the outside i just thought they had a skill set and drive that i didn't have enough of at that point and, and um you know maybe i follow a path of least resistance um but at some point, you know, just the desire within me became strong enough to push me out of my comfort zone and, yeah. and, and to try. It just wasn't it wasn't strong enough. It's sort of day one. Yeah. You know, you know, you just proved. I mean, this is always the case. We are our worst enemy. Right. We, we, yeah. we are the ones standing in our own way many, many yeah. times. Uh, as yeah. long as yeah. we learn to get out of our own way 
Because even if we don't, at some point it comes out because that's the that's the natural. Well, that's that's great. I mean, you you, you have uh, so entrepreneurs are born; they are not created. I mean, they are not taught; they are born. So this was in you. It's a great. I mean, I mean, look, seven figure seller, number one in the. You know, in such a short period of time, a thousand plus reviews. To me, Great. you know, to me, your biggest success, the way I see it, is a thousand plus reviews in such a short period of time. Seven figure seller is no big deal. I mean, you can dollars. I always say this: dollars. Make sure that your success is not indexed to dollars, because yeah. the only value those dollars represent is the number on it. However much you have it, but reviews, they're priceless. That says so many things and that indicates that there's a lot more that will happen. So I'm really happy for you.